In this video, traders, we've got the distinction between prop and pro traders and why they generally outperform retail. Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm well welcome to you. So get this question quite a lot and it's a really good question. And the question is, why do people who are trading prop or pro traders, and pro traders could be those who are trading for a family fund, a hedge fund, um, something like that. There are different permutations and variables of that, but someone who's trading actively in the, in the capacity of performance related pay, i.e. they're not just a dealer, they are someone who is saying, okay, if I make money, I get a percentage of the money that I make. That's what we're talking about specifically, wherever office they're sitting in, but that as opposed to someone who's just an order taker and has called themselves a trader. So why do these generally outperform retail? Some reasons why I think they do and reasons why they don't. Now, I've known people who have traded prop and so we've got a good insight into how the whole thing is structured. I've also known people who have traded uh, or worked at banks, not necessarily traded at banks, but they actually have been dealing with, and no pun intended, dealing with some of the traders and understand the flow of information and how everything works. So let's look at it in more detail. The first thing is um, the obvious one, which maybe is not so obvious, is there's a big filter before starting. So what do I mean by that? So to trade prop or to trade professionally, they are going to be hundreds, if not thousands of people applying for that. And they pick what they believe is the best person for the job. Now, not in all cases. Now, this isn't a video about the prop model and whether, you know, this, whether there's this way of doing it or that way of doing it. I think I've done a video on that before. But the point is, there's a pool of people and they will pick who they think is most likely to succeed when trading the company's money. So already there's a filter, whereas retail, Anyone with a few hundred bucks, a few hundred euros, a few hundred pounds can start to trade, give or take. So already you've narrowed down the field of people who are more likely to succeed. So that's a big one to start off with. The second one is support. Now there's massive, huge support for these guys who are trading prop, who are trading professionally. As you can imagine, if it's company's money, they're gonna spend on, you know, I know that some traders, some prop firms have, you know, in-house trading psychologists or they bring people in for it. They have accountability. In fact, there's another thing in a moment, we'll go to that, but they have support from their peers. They have kind of morning briefings. They have everything they need. They have the infrastructure in terms of uh, data in terms of uh, all the stuff that you would need as a trader, there's support that can't be done for them. No one's going to give them, there's no secret secret source or anything. We'll look at that in a second as well. But the point is there's support there. There's coaching, there's understanding, there's learning. There's often they're talking to each other on headsets throughout the day. There's everything that you would need to flourish as a trader if you've got the ability. So, so that's a big thing. Number three is risk management is solid. I think this is one of the most important ones actually, guys, is that you know retail traders, we say we have risk management, but very often most people blow up and don't become a trader they wanna be, whether they're just making a little bit of extra money, whether they're kind of investing some funds or whether they're making a full-time career because they run out of cash because they blow up. And now if you've got a solid risk management strategy, it won't happen. Unfortunately, when we're trading, we're a risk manager, we're a trader, you know, we're, we're every single hat, we're wearing every single hat. However, when you're trading professional, you're trading prop, the risk management is ironclad. It's basically, it's either gonna be done for you, in, in which case you're given a certain amount of capital, and when that goes, you're out of the game, or you're more, more than likely not out of the game, more than likely you'll put on a break, or you'll dial down in size. So you have to think about, all you gotta do is operate within the parameters, and if you don't, you're out anyway. So there's loads of reasons for the risk management to be solid. And I think that's the number one reason why most retail traders fail is they're over trading, they're over leveraging, all this kind of stuff, which prop traders generally won't do or they will do, but it's the company that's doing it. So they're not gonna fail uh, unless the company believes that they should have more capital. So they're gonna only give more capital to people who are performing. So that's a really big one. I think that's one of the main ones actually. And number four, they're focused on themselves only. What do I mean by this? The, re the prop traders, they're focused on themselves and the team and their own little environment. They don't care what other people are doing. So many retail traders are worried about how much money that guy's making, who's doing well, whether he's got a good trade, whether he's a professional trader, whether he's a profitable trader, whether he's this, whether he's that. They're spending all their time worrying about everybody else rather than saying, okay, 
can this guy give me some valuable information? Am I going to learn from this guy or girl? Yes, I am. I don't care what the situation is. I'm going to take that knowledge and use it. Is this book going to be valuable to me? Do I need to dig in and find out if the author's made 10 million pounds? Does it matter? No, if I get value from it, then great. And that's the thing with pro traders is they're just taking the support that's there, they're using information if they find it useful, and then they're just using that to increase and improve their own trading. They're not caring about what other people are doing and their performance, they only care about their own because that's all that matters. Number five is accountability. Another big one, I think, if you're a pro trader, you're accountable to your risk manager, manager your trading a leader, however it's structured in the, in the company, but you have accountability. You can't just go in, lose money, not show up, not do this, not do that, not put in the work. Because eventually they'll say, hey, you're not the man for the job, go for the job, out the door. So there's accountability you don't have as a retail trader because you roll up as a retail trader. You can do what you want, when you want. You can trade what you want. You can trade the size you want. You can trade however you want. There are no boundaries. And we have to imply that you have to uh, force those boundaries on us so that we've got a chance of being focused on what we want. And that's another major reason that, that retail traders fail is they're kind of looking at everything. They're trading different strategies, different markets, different sizes, different times. They roll in at this time in the morning. They roll in at this time at night. They do this, they do that. And there's no, there's no uh, structure there. Whereas accountability and structure that you get in a pro environment, proper environment or in a pro environment is exactly that. You're trading this market, these markets, this strategy between these hours, these are your risk parameters, off you go. So that's some of the reasons. Now, what they don't have is better info. You know, they have, nowadays, everyone has exactly the same info. This myth that they've got a secret feed that gives them information earlier than everyone else. Yes, listen, if they're trading on news releases, then a microsecond advantage, they might have it. But listen, that's, that's, that's not the way it is anymore. Algos are trading that kind of stuff. There's no advantage from better info. There's no info they have that we can't get as retail traders. We've got access to everything, we've got access to all the documentation, we've got access to all the charts, all the analysis. They are just better at putting it together and filtering out the noise. We have the same information. Two, they've got cheaper costs. Now, this might be true, but generally in prop, it's actually the opposite is true. In prop, most of the time, these guys have got a desk fee. These guys have got commissions that, yes, they are reduced, but they're not massively reduced that it makes it impossible for retail to be profitable. We are in the best time ever to be trading, guys. Commissions or spreads, however you're trading it, are so, so low. The barrier to entry is so, so low. Data feeds are so cheap. Charting packages are so cheap. Just kind of 15 years ago, you'd have to be paying loads of money a month just for a decent char charting package. Commissions were excessive. It was very expensive to trade. There was a difference between institution and retail. Now that's moved a lot closer and the cheaper cost, while if you're doing volume, if you're doing volume as well, you can negotiate costs that are cheaper. You don't have to be paying full price for stuff. Um, that's not that's not the case anymore. The costs are generally the same. And number three, secret club. This is the big kind of myth, isn't it? It's a big secret club and everyone knows what the market's gonna do. Listen guys, if that was the case, then the most powerful hedge funds in the world would never ever lose money. They would be making absolutely huge amounts of money consistently. And we just have to look at some of the track record of some of the greats like Paul Shooter Jones is hedge fund. Some of the big hedge funds, they have down months, they have down years, they have down quarters. And they wouldn't do that if it was a secret club and they knew what was going on. They were like, listen, I know the market's going here, I'll just pile in. So forget about that. I don't know that most of the subscribers on this channel get that. And you know, by the way, I appreciate your support if you're a subscriber. I know that you guys get that, but there's some out there who still believe there's some sort of secret club of funds and hedge funds that all know where the market's going. And I'm not to say there's not collusion where there shouldn't be perhaps with stocks and what have you, but it's not a foolproof method. There's not some, as soon as you get into prop trading, you're given uh, you know, access to kind of some sort of secret lock that shows you everything that's profitable. And that's not the case. So how can we kind of emulate this in a retail environment? The first thing is to you know, get yourself some accountability. However you do that, whether you're accountable to a mentor, whether you're accountable to uh, you know, you know, a wife or husband or whatever it may be or something, so you've got some accountability. And then again, uh, focus on the sales only. Forget about what everyone else is doing. Just take information from the sources you think are useful and then move it to progress yourself, yourself forward. Okay, risk management is solid. Making sure that your risk management is as ironclad as it can be. Be. 
putting in fail safe so if you detect when you're going outside of the risk parameters because sometimes it's not as easy as saying well i will stick in stick in it sometimes you have to you get into a situation where you're un, uh, subconsciously going down a, a horrible you know, loss scenario so putting in kind of breaks emergency fail safes in there to catch you before you do is a good one and then obviously support guys get yourself some coaching uh, if you need to get, you know get support of a, a little network a group of traders who are like you or trading the same kind of thing that's a good way of doing it um, get yourself some education all that kind of stuff um, and filter before starting obviously you can't do that because but I think that most of the subscribers, subscribers to the channel and people who watch these videos are pretty good traders anyway in terms of how they want to approach the markets what they're looking for and what they want to achieve from it so anyway best of luck guys in trading uh, keep the risk managed whatever you're up to i'll see you next one bye bye